Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where I'm having a reflective day as we get towards the end of the year, looking back at what's happened in Unity Catalog this year. And that may seem a strange little slice of the world to look at, but we had the inaugural Databricks meetup in London the other day, uh, and I thought I'd do a bit of a roundup of everything that's changed across Databricks, and I spent so long just pulling out all of the changes in Unity Catalog alone, I thought it kind of made sense to focus on the journey that we have had seeing Unity change at the start of the year to where we are now and how much of the world it understands compared to where it did at the start. So I just want to share that with you. I bothered making the slide for the meetup. I might as well share it with you guys. As always, Advancing Spark is brought to you by Advancing Analytics, your friendly data engineering, data analytics, data AI consultancy is what we do. If you need help building out a big data platform, then do give us a shout. That is what we do. And if you're going into the Christmas holidays, if you're having a festive period and you're feeling, you know, you don't want to spend time with your family, you want to learn things, don't forget, we do have the Spark fans discount on our online Spark training. I'll put a link down below if you want to go and have a look at that stuff. And as always, if you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know what you want to know in the new year. What are the big topics coming out that you want to dig into? And yeah, we'll make some videos. We'll make it work. Cool. Let's go and have a look. So, start of the year, we had this great thing called Unity Catalog. We could add a bunch of tables to it. It would automatically do end-to-end -end column level lineage, which is just great. I could have a lot of tables in my bronze layer. I won't go into bronze, silver, gold. That's another video. I can pull from bronze into silver, and it would just record the fact that because I read data from one place and I wrote it to another place, in PySpark or in SQL or whatever, however I've written my um, data transformations, and it will automatically capture the lineage down to the column level. Now, that is fantastic. Now, the bit that we take umbrage with is end-to-end. -end. We're taking a bit of a liberty here if, if Databricks are telling us that that is an end-to-end -end process, because it, it's not. Because this whole picture, actually, we get the data from somewhere. I've got some Parquet files or CSVs or JSON, whatever someone's sending me. I've got some raw data that I need to get into that bronze tables. Then it just magically appear. I might be sourcing data from an external party and trying to get their tables. Maybe that's coming as Delta. Maybe it's coming as something else. I've got a lookup some partway through my process that goes and queries an external system, pushes down a query, brings some reference data back and joins it to my data as part of the transformation process. Unity Catalog couldn't see any of that. Maybe I've got a machine learning model that's adding some segmentation data. It's augmenting. It's adding an extra column into my data that's predicting or classifying something. And then I'm actually doing a load of queries on my data and kind of my, my users are using the data in different ways. Now, all of these various different extra pieces don't really fall in that end-to-end -end that we had at the start of the year. So... If you're using Unity Catalog, you've been using it for a little while, the start of the year was saying it's great at looking at delta tables in my leg, in Databricks, and that's it. Anytime we leave that ecosystem, yeah, Unity Catalog doesn't know what's going on and we don't have lineage there. Now, that's, that's, that's a problem if you're going to tell me it's end-to-end. -end. The big thing is throughout this year, there's features that have been dropped inside Unity which are kind of ticking off each of these boxes. That story is a hell of a lot more complete than it was at the start of the year, which is great. Just want to do a quick recap and go, just take this picture with like that box that's quite fixed. Let's talk about these other different pieces and how they're actually solved. So now if you're embarking on a Unity Cat journey, what are the various different things that you can use to actually color in the rest of that picture? That's the plan. So yeah, number one, volumes, super simple. Back in the day, we mounted a lake onto a Databricks workspace, and then we could just go and explore all the files and folders that were in there and use that to source data through. With the Unity Catalog and everything being very focused on having a delta table, specific formats of structured data, that story kind of fell apart. Now, volumes are coming in to fix that problem, essentially saying, as part of my catalog, there is just an unstructured folder, and inside there, there'll be a bunch of files and folders and subfolders and then we use that as the source of our data. There should not be any structured data in there. I can't register a delta table from data that's inside a volume. It is just my data that I'm yet to put into a good format. But the patterns that we see most people using where you have data coming in and going into a landing area that is unstructured, 
then being pulled from that and turned into our initial bronze tables makes perfect sense. So volumes, I can create a volume over unstructured files on top of a lake. It appears in my catalog. Again, why it's no longer called the data catalog, because it's not just delta tables that are in that catalog. I can get things like volumes. Let's see, here's my, uh, here's my catalog, here's my schema, here's a bunch of tables. And then here is a volume that has a load of unstructured or yet to be structured data that I can then do something with. And again, if I'm pulling data from that volume, we're going to see lineage, we're going to see governance and control, we've got security, we can document it. It's part of our governance. I'm about to say purview, <laughs> that wouldn't work anything. It's part of what we can see from our, our security oversight. So yeah, volumes colored in fixes that particular problem. Next, we've got something like Lakehouse Federation. Lakehouse Federation is that thing that allows us to get any queries we're running and get against an external source. So if I just had a data frame in PySpark and I use the JDBC connector and go query the SQL server, that's fine, but it has no oversight. There's no governance, there's no security. I can't, it's not really tracked. Whereas Lakehouse Federation, I can register a foreign catalog. I can create a pointer inside of Unity Catalog saying, well, actually there's a database server there. This is the access permissions. These are the tables I want people to have access to. Allow people to query it as if it was a Delta table in my lake. And push that query back down to that source compute, whatever it's Snowflake or BigQuery or SQL Server or whatever it happens to be, but treat it as if part of my lake and capture lineage and make it part of that whole story. The Lakehouse Federation is coloring in that box and again, making it appear as if it's just part of our catalog. If I go into my catalog, I'll have catalogs, which are internal catalogs containing Unity catalog tables that are Delta, and I'll have a foreign catalog, which is pointing at a SQL server and just lists the schemas and tables inside that SQL server. And I can just treat it as if it was the same. Again, it's bringing these different aspects together. So great. We've got models moving over. So where we had MLflow previously is a completely separate thing. And we had our model registry and they all lived in one specific view inside of Databricks. We've now got all those models that are registered. You register it with Unity Catalog. You register any functions and feature tables with Unity Catalog. They all appear in the same unified Unity Catalog. So MLflow coming into that picture and allowing us to register models and secure models in the same way. And look at the descriptions and lineage and uh, all the governance aspects of that same model in the same place. Again, that's, that's now being rolled out. We can go and see that. We can go and see it working. Um, we just see it going. Oof, I haven't changed my title. It still says volumes. I, but yeah, I just still see that model as if it was a table. It's just in my list of objects. Basically, Unity Catalog is, or that catalog view is giving just a list of objects. The object might be a Delta table. It might be a SQL Server table that I've linked in. It might be an unstructured volume. It might be a machine learning model or even a security function I've defined within there. Now that the less common that we see, but that idea of I'm receiving data and it happens to be in Delta format, well, actually we're starting to see that in terms of the Del uh, Databricks marketplace. We've got a more formalized way of bringing data into the ecosystem by saying, well, actually, the person I'm buying data from, they've stood it up as a Delta table. They've registered that Delta share with Databricks Marketplace. I can source from that directly with no having to think about ETL hops and send me a file and get SFTP and put it over there and I can suck it across. I just register that Delta table, read from it as part of my ETL, and then it's part of my overall view of lineage of everything that's going on in my system. Again, Databricks Marketplace, yes, you have to be signed up as a Databricks provider to be able to go and use it and pull some data from it. But just actually so incredibly useful if you are using that kind of data provider kind of service. And then I guess the, the final thing, which is less, less formal, less, less tracked, is what are people actually doing with the data? Now, certainly Unity, across all my tables and all my different securable objects, I've got lineage in that I can see what queries people are uh, running against it. I can see what tables people commonly use. What, what table people commonly join together and the query patterns that they use against them. So I've got a better idea than what people are doing with my data. Now, I used to have that in Databricks SQL in like the query history view. By having it just in my catalog, I can just explore my catalog, look at the table and go, how do people normally use this table? 
get out those insights incredibly useful for understanding how people are using it it doesn't give me a full picture of that particular one so it's a little bit of a liberty saying that box is colored in uh so power bi specifically i don't know which semantic model it went into which reports and dashboards they're using it for anything that happens once it leaves the databricks ecosystem we've got no sight of uh same for tableau or looker whatever viz kind of tool you're using we don't see too much of it but we at least know how people are using those tables and how often they're querying them or how much they're spending on those queries which is more than we used to have so that that alone in terms of how much that picture has changed throughout this year from i've got my unity catalog and it's fairly fairly blinkered in terms of what i can see to actually loads of different tools we can now stitch together to get that overall picture of what things actually look like what data that we've got in the ecosystem how it's all working together loads of stuff going on there and that's that's a big change now those pictures are just telling you a few things that have changed in terms of you know how we how we make specifically joins to other parts of data tons of other changes that have gone into generally unity catalog all the observability stuff did a video about that the other day the ability to track schema drift to be able to track how my data has changed in terms of its data profiling and data shape and data distribution now just baked in as something we can just turn on and ask databricks to regularly poll for us you got the hive metastore api so we want to go and integrate with it from other things we can now do that slides disappearing uh got things like ABAC people are talking about so the ability to do some classification and controls based on how my data has been tagged fairly huge the AI generated data dictionary is the thing I personally love in that you can just look inside your catalog look at a table and it will go oh you've not bothered to document this table yet we've looked at the data here's the description this is what you should call this is how you should describe this table you can look at all the columns inside the table and go can you can you just like generate descriptions for me and it will do it. It will generate all the descriptions for you. Now, obviously, you should take that with a pinch of salt and actually just make sure all those things are right. But there's like no excuse not to have a well-documented, fully fleshed out data dictionary now just doing 80% of the work for you. And that's a massive, massive driver. And the final thing is that Unity Catalog just turned on by default. We've heard so much from various different of our clients. People are like, yeah, I, I want Unity Catalog, but it's really hard to turn it on. I need to find someone with that global uh, AD access in Azure. There's different things that are or blockers. And again, just working to make sure. No, if you spin up a Databricks workspace now, it's going to have its own version of Unity Cat. If you, even if you haven't enabled it yet, it's going to try and remove all those blockers because if there's so much baked into Unity, it's basically stupid not to use it. Oh, huge, huge amounts of things going on this year in terms of how much Unity Catalog alone has evolved. And that's... It's an interesting one, right? Because it's we're talking data governance and data modeling and data security and all those things, which aren't interesting topics to the majority of people. But to actually say, well, when we moved into lakes, they were really immature and people struggled with all those things. The whole lake house thing had been evolving over the past five, six years to get to a state when it's so mature, people are caring about the, the mature topics. And maturity topics are... How do I govern this properly? How do I actually make sure people are treating their data properly? How do I have good data management principles baked into this? Whereas previously, it's like, how, how do I get it to work? And the point that we're at this way, kind of people are really focused on making sure the governance story is slick. The governance story is AI generated and AI automated. And everything is as seamless as physically possible, even when we're talking about distributed cloud systems with different data sources being pulled into things used by different things just that end-to-end -end picture is way better than it used to be and yeah i thought it'd be interesting to share just in terms of having a think back and going oh it has actually come a long way this year hasn't it it's been a long year but that's moved a hell of a long distance to actually get us to that point so yeah if you're not using unity currently but you are using databricks thoroughly thoroughly recommend you should be using unity catalog all of these things are baked in there isn't a specific cost associated with most of them unless you're spinning up something that has some compute that's going and looking at something for you. If you're not using another governance tool, you should at least have Unity turned on by default. But also a lot of the stuff that Unity's tracking, all of the lineage and like sort of the generated description things, you can even push that into other data governance tools if you have them. Let Unity do a lot of the work and then share it so everything has the same common definitions. 
final piece, the final, my final argument as to why you really should be using this. AI. Obviously, everybody is so excited about generative AI and being able to use English language and ask a query and all, figure out what you actually mean and produce the data for you and do all of that good stuff. Uh, we've seen Databricks talking about this Lakehouse IQ thing. They announced it at the Data AI Summit. But anytime you've got something like a, a co-pilot and a, an assistant, anything that is using generative AI to take your data models, take your information, and write a query on it for you, you want to give it the best chance you possibly can to understand what you actually mean. And by having that governance layer and having a well-documented data model, by putting the effort in to say, well, actually, this is as well-described and as well-documented as it can possibly be, not only are you helping your users and improving data discovery and help build a solid foundation for self-service analytics and all of those good stuff that we've been banging on about for years, but also you're giving the AI the best chance to be able to write queries and understand what you mean. If a business unit comes in and says, you know, how much cash we made? The AI needs to know, well, cash made, well, that probably profit. Was that profit or revenue? In this context of the question, they've documented, that, okay, that's going to mean that the more information it has, the better chance it has of actually being able to, able to understand people without forcing all of the users to learn really, really structured ways of asking their questions so they can get an answer out. The more they can just ask questions casually, the more they're going to use it. And the more chance you've got of that being right, the better documented your data model is. Put the effort in now. And then when all these tools are coming out next year and you're seeing this whole slew of new AI-based data modeling and data querying and data dashboard building things, if you've put the work in now, you're going to have a much better time to be able to just turn things on and suddenly see a ton of benefit. So just makes sense. There's an actual functional techie fun reason to do data governance and document your uh, data model. Great. Love it. Finally, we'll get some good, well-documented, well-understood, well-diagrammed data models out in the Lakehouse world. And I, for one, am excited about it. Right. I'm going to stop ranting. Done. Go, you Eugene. Thing. Lots of stuff in there. At the very least, make sure you're using things like volumes to make sure all the different touch points in your data pipeline there so you've got end-to-end -end lineage because it's just so handy being able to do that. I'm about to change that. Is that going to impact anything downstream? Yes, I should probably actually test it. Just makes sense. All right, don't worry that. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new around here. Do let us know down below what kind of topics you'd like to see us covering in the new year. I've got a big old list, but it's always good to hear what you guys are interested in. And yeah, if you don't watch a video I'm going to do tomorrow, have a lovely festive period. And I'll see you in the new year. Cheers.